I'm big into kind of like morning routines and how I think how you start the how you start the day really can affect the whole rest of the day. Right. Um, and so, like for myself, I was asking you a little bit earlier when we were working out of the gym about different uh, workouts and stuff. Something I like to do in the morning. Obviously, I want to improve and do more uh, in the future. But like I wake up, the first thing I'll do is like drink some water because you lose a lot of water overnight. And then I do to fill in the kind of morning prayers. And then I sit and like meditate like 20 minutes. I've been trying different kind of meditation. And the um, cool thing um, I found, because usually meditation is like a um, Eastern tradition, but I found that it actually comes also from Judaism. Right. One of the reasons as I've gotten into a lot of these things is that uh, everything I find can always be related back to Judaism. It right. seems like it always starts there. Right. Um, so like I go through that and then do lots of different movements and then after working out and whatnot in the morning, just a little bit, because it's not like a full workout, but just a little, something to get the day going. You know, then I'll get to go do, like I've been doing cryotherapy or cold showers. Uh, something to just like get the kickstart to the day as well as like reading and learning something which is re really important because that's in the morning is when you're very kind of most awake right. and so I wanted to kind of get a rundown of what your morning routine is from when you were top player in high school um, to college and, and in the pros I mean it, it varied a little bit but yeah uh, well, college, I, I mean, high school, high school was different because we didn't end school till 6.30 at night. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, I would just try to get to school on time, which is prayer at 7.45. We'd finish school at 6.30, study hall, basketball. And four times a week, I was doing weights in the evenings. But on your own? Yeah, on your own, yeah. With, with, no, with a trainer. College, you know, college, college. 6.30 in the weight room. Every day we were in the weight room at 6.30. Then we had class, practice, study hall, dorm. You know, that was that. But then when I turned, I basically turned pro after my freshman year, I had a little bit more adulthood. I can make my own schedule more, uh, and that's really where. You know, first thing I would, I wake up, I acknowledge, I say Modani, I acknowledge Hashem. Uh, then I would like listen to a Torah class for as long back as I can remember and work out really early, 4:50. You still do that. 4:15, right? yeah, you know, 3:50 some days. Um, you know, and then I feel like. When you feel good about yourself, you, you get to help other people better, in my opinion. Yeah. So after I work out, I feel like I could be a better husband, a better a better father, uh, accomplish more throughout the day. So it's very important for me to take care of myself mentally and physically, emotionally and spiritually, and then I can start the day. Like I do all that even before the kids wake up. So once they wake up, they already have me at my best. Yeah. I, I, and I love hearing that because when I listen to top people with nutritionists, uh, trainers, because I also want to be up to date on what's the latest kind of uh, workout thing. Every they all say that you know you want to you have to feel good, you want to be happy right. about yourself before kind of helping. For sure. And I think that's a lesson in the Torah as well. For sure. You can't help others if you can't help yourself. Right. Exactly. So. Um, you know, I, I stay very active throughout the day in addition to that, right? I don't own a car, I ride my bike everywhere. Um, everywhere there's like poles, I try to stop and get a couple sets in throughout the day. That way, because I'm constantly feeling good about myself, then I can constantly help people more, be more patient, be on top of my game and less tired and smarter and quicker. And, but it's, it's, you know, I, I live exactly where I want to live and I live the lifestyle how I want to live, which is very important. Yeah. I always wanted to live in Jerusalem, and I don't. I didn't want a car. I live how I want to live, you know, where I want to live. And I'm always around the people that I want to be with, so it, it puts me in a better situation to succeed. And I'm, you know, you know, thank God I'm. I have the best marriage that I've ever seen in my life. So thank, you know, it's just a miracle because 
everything stems from that. You have a happy marriage. You know, everything else is all, all the other blessings just just happen. You know? So I'm, I'm very blessed with my wife. Everything. Does she get up and work yeah. out sometimes with you too? She gets up. Yeah, we get. We do it together. Oh, you do it together. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you also have to get like, because sleep is so important. I go to bed early unless it's like a game. What, like night. eight, nine thirty, ten. You sure you get about seven. Yeah, I mean, it's a little harder now because we have an infant. We had our fifth kid, and baby wakes up every two hours. But once the baby gets a little older, like before, before this baby was born, yeah, unless we, we go to bed at like 9, 30, 10, and get up at like 4, 15, 4, 20, 4, 30. But if there's, an, if there's a home game that I'm working at, I don't get home until later. Those days are hard, but I still get up early. Yeah, those days, are hard, those days are hard, but I still get up because I, I, my most important thing is like learning and working out. I have to do it. Yeah. Well, so, say you're constantly moving and, and learning, which I love, and I, especially after I hurt my foot, yeah. and now with the concussion, but I'm still kind of recovering. I, I had a paradigm shift to really just make everything a, a learning kind of. You always right. be learning. Right. But it's also been tough for me because it's been, you know getting injured like that as you've experienced it. It makes you really slow down. Right. But. As a player from like different highlights of these, and, and you, you've had a great career, how did you really, what helped you stay calm in a sense and like poised? Because you know, a lot of players, especially kids growing up, and this is something I noticed with the technology and stuff, they have such a crazy mind, they can't focus for nearly as long. Right. But you seem to be so like in the moment. And I, like that's why I got into really like meditating and different things and, and learning Torah because that's, that stuff helps. And so, yeah. and you grew up while learning the different Torah. Do you think that was kind of like a meditation for you, where it helped you really just be in the moment? And this is like a cool question. Like, sorry, my questions are kind of long with yeah. the stories, but I took this from like Kobe one time when he was saying. He had a game one day and he had um, he was in geometry class and he wasn't paying attention to what the teacher said and blah blah blah. He gets the game time, the game's like tied, like sure he has a, a good game, but like loses focus for one moment in a sense when the other team shoots a shot and he uh, misses sight of his guy and the guy gets a rebound and wins the game because of his fault and he's, he, he says it was in that moment that he realized in geometry class, like, and, and in every moment, he has to be kind of present. Okay. Wherever you are, like, sure people are saying you always have to be like practicing basketball, or when you're not at basketball, you're thinking about basketball. But I've come to think that that's not necessarily the best. When you're in math class, you should be thinking about math class. When you're playing basketball, you should only be thinking about basketball. Right. Well, I think, like, I'm a big fan of, like, trying to put yourself in a situation to succeed. Okay? So you want to put yourself in the best situation to succeed in, in whatever it is that you're doing. So, you know, for me, I knew if I had a game at night, I'd want to feel good getting into the game. And the only way I'd feel good getting into the game was if I did well. If I did my homework, if I did well in geometry, if I did well in all my classes, then... I wouldn't have anything weighing on my head and I was able to be mindful, more mindful in the game. Yeah. So yeah, whatever you're doing, you want to be mindful of exactly what you're doing, but if you have like a mission in life, then it helps you like refocus other things. Like, for example, like, you know, right now I knew that I need to inspire these kids at basketball camp. So for months on end, you know, I'm prepared as much as possible with the logistics, did everything so that once I was here, I'd be able to like give them the best time possible and make this camp as successful as possible. So there's like mindfulness for the moment, but there's also mindfulness for your bigger picture. So like, I know that I need to eat a healthy lunch so that I can coach better later in the day, period. If I don't feel good about myself, then yeah, I'm not gonna be able to coach and be, pa be as patient, so. Uh, but I was just trying to put myself in a situation to succeed, I, you know, with, with everything. Like, I, I try at home to make sure nothing's ever stressful. I make sure there's never laundry. I make sure the, the garbage is never overflowing. 
I, you know, I make sure my wife, like everything that she would ever need, is already there, ready for her. Um, you know, I, I, I like try to, you know, make everything in the best situation possible, and that helps you be more mindful because everything's organized. You're not in a, not nothing's like nothing's everything's taken care of. And your outside environment kind of is, is similar to what your inside environment. Is. Right. You know, everything's. You know, being really, having a good time, you know, time management, organizational skills. You know, if my wife, like, hints something to me, even hints it, or I, doesn't even hint it, and I know I already do it even before, like, she'll never have to ask me something twice. So that way, I don't have anything weighing, I'm sitting with you, I, everything's already taken care of. I don't need, oh, I forgot to do. Yeah, because then it's otherwise, all, you're not fully present. Right, exactly. So and that, you may not, you're not giving your best, so right. I wouldn't be. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, Good to try to be on top of everything and not be overstressed or underwater with a million things to do as much as possible, you know? Yeah. But that stuff and like uh, it stuck with me what you said the other day and how to the kids and how sometimes you're like everybody can play well when they're at their best, but sometimes you you're not always going to be at your best. Right. But that's why you you do you start the healthy habits, you make sure everything else is kind of doing well and you're making sure you're in a successful environment so you're at your best most of the time exactly, exactly. what what kind of like uh how, how do you eat like at home like healthy uh, yeah, i i only eat healthy food i never eat yeah, junk same. food um i don't drink coffee i don't eat you don't chocolate drink coffee. no but the coffee's got a bunch of benefits yeah i don't i don't drink coffee i don't eat chocolate i never smoke i never drink I only eat fruits and vegetables and healthy stuff. I never eat non-healthy food. Yeah. I can't remember last time I ever had something not healthy. Yeah. Uh, never treat yourself? Never. Felt like I needed to when I was here in Israel. <laughs> yeah. No, I never eat junk food. Uh, I only eat at very specific hours and I don't go off those hours. You do kind of like an intermittent fasting? No, I just eat my three meals. Yeah. And I don't overeat. And then I'll just have like, I hydrate a lot. I stay you hydrated. stay away from like breads or anything? Or? I don't, if I have bread, it'll only be like healthy bread, whole wheat bread, or like, in Israel there's a lot of healthy breads. A lot of very good breads, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel very blessed. What kind of, what kind of uh, I'm interested a lot into like the nutrition, so. I mean, stay away from junk food. I mean, it's been difficult for me while I came to Israel because I'm not really familiar with right what where to get. Yeah, the good I stuff, usually but. eat dates every day: dates, bananas, fruits, vegetables, tomatoes. Any like the well, not during the nine days, but any meat, meat and chicken, yeah. salmon. I, I usually have salmon and chicken or meat on Shabbat. But that's about it. Yeah, not during the week. Barely ever. No. Really, no meat. No, I just keep everything real simple. I eat like Vegetables. last night I had rice and uh, and broccoli, just rice and broccoli. You know? Wow. Or like yeah, <laughs> just I keep I'm very simple. Yeah. You know, uh, I keep everything simple. Uh, what what uh, you were mentioning like your your mission like mission for like mindfulness kind of in the moment as well as mindfulness for your vision. What for your mission? What is yeah, your... my mission is always try to be do good through basketball. When I was playing, I did it through playing, but now that I can't play anymore, it's just trying to inspire as many kids as possible through basketball. I like it. I, I must say, I like the, the camp, because I've helped out at many camps. I like the kind of organization of this whole day camp, as well as the, you know, you're training them in the training room. Yeah. You're showing a lot of functional stuff. And you're there learning Torah in the morning and stuff. Yeah. At least hopefully they get up. But it's it's very all encompassing because you know how you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah, it's all a lot of life skills. A lot of life skills. Did you ever have to work something else? Another type of uh, job? You know? Nah, my whole life's been basketball. It's awesome. I've been doing this since I was teaching hoops since. I paid for my SAT courses by run, running clinics. You know, I've been started running clinics. Yeah, when I was 15, I started doing basketball clinics so that I could pay for SAT tutoring. Just for myself, in my neighborhood. JCC, Brooklyn. Just Kid. like put it out there, like. Yeah, now I, I was 15, I already got a job at Five Star Basketball Camp. And uh, I've been doing that ever since. 
well. Nice. What's uh, one lesson you would leave? You would like for your uh, legend in a sense for everybody to. Uh, there's one thing you could help others to live by. I think that never let society dictate what you can or cannot do. Uh, and also, like, some people think, like, religion takes you away from from happiness, but I think it just shows you, it brings you true happiness. It doesn't take you away from your dreams, it just shows you how to reach your dreams in a more meaningful way. You know, and uh, transcendence is the key to, to happiness, I would say. Transcendence in which? Just everything, overcoming, just the way the world is built right now is, like, by overcoming challenges. You reach true happiness. Hard work, you know. Like being able to look at it in a positive perspective. Yeah, we be positive, be optimistic, overcome challenges, better yourself, refine yourself, have a relationship with God, focus your energy on the important things in life, and you'll be really happy. You know, in my opinion. Yeah, I never got caught up in like the glitz and the glamour and basketball comes with. None of that was ever important. To me, so. Yeah. Happy to go. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks. I won't take up yeah. too much time. Yeah.